Hi, I'm John Nixon from Eagle Lake Woodworking and welcome to part 4 of the video series on how I built my pool table. This video focuses on the feet for the leg system. It may look like an ordinary foot where the column rests on top of the foot, but it's not. It's actually a hollow collar that fits around the base of the column. Now the reason I designed it this way is because there's a need to level the pool table with shims underneath each leg column. This foot, shaped like a collar, will conceal all those shims and give a nice sturdy look to the bottom of the column. The foot is actually a veneered MDF core and there's a lot of individual pieces on this foot. And It's one of those times where I wish I had a vacuum bag to do all this veneering, but I don't. And I'll show you how I got by without one. To make the core for the foot, I cut MDF into square pieces on the table saw. I'll need three pieces for each foot. The approximate size of the feet is 10 inches by 10 inches. At the chop saw, I've set up a stop block where I'll remove the center portion of the foot. Since this cut doesn't go all the way through, I'll finish it off using the jigsaw. I'll laminate all three pieces together by gluing and brad nailing them together. I nail towards the inside because the outside is going to receive a 45 degree chamfer. I use a flush cut bit on the router table to even the inside and outside of each foot. With my largest chamfer bit in the router table, I chamfer off the top side of all four edges of the foot. You can see that the foot fits loosely around the column, and that's what we're looking for. The piece that goes on top of the foot will be traced to fit the column exactly. I trace each column individually and mark the corresponding pieces and sides that were traced. This is to ensure that we fit the right side to the right column when it all goes back together. At the bandsaw, I'll cut out the center of this top section of panel material. I'm concentrating on getting as close to the line as possible. I square up the inside corners with a chisel and use a file to smooth out the edge. To glue the panel material to the top side of the foot, I apply yellow glue. And I also put some glue in the seam of the panel material. Clamping's a little tricky. I have two things to concentrate on. Bringing that seam together, and then providing downward pressure to hold the panel material to the foot. After that's dry, I can use the same chamfer bit with the bearing removed to flush the panel material against the foot. Now we have a nice smooth chamfer ready for veneer. One thing I like about veneering, it's really easy to get highly figured, nice looking wood. I have some wider strips left over from another project that I need to trim down to fit the feet. 
I stack the veneer and put it inside this cutting jig. It basically clamps it together so that I can run it through the table saw. It's two pieces of MDF and wing nuts on bolts to clamp it together. I run the jig through the table saw, cutting off the waste and leaving the strips I need inside the jig. This method is a really nice, easy way to cut a lot of strips at once. First thing I'll do is veneer the flat side of the feet. I cut the strip a little bit longer than I need and then tape it in place. I'll apply a nice even layer of yellow glue and then another piece of tape just to keep it from sliding around. I do both sides and clamp up this assembly. Veneering the chamfered sides goes the same way. I'll cut the piece wider than I need and tape it in place. And again, spread a nice even layer of yellow glue and tape the piece down. The tricky thing about the chamfered sides is finding a way to clamp them up. I did, but it was a little awkward. You can see from this view that I changed the direction of the grain on the veneer to simulate end grain on the foot. To do this, I'll need to seam two pieces. I get a nice seam together and tape that first and then proceed the way I previously did with the other straight sides, taping and gluing the veneer and then clamping it. The angled sides go the same way. I match the grain, tape the seam, tape it in place on the foot, glue it, and then find a way to clamp it. I'm going to show you a few different methods for trimming the veneer flush with the core. One of the easiest ways is to use a bearing guided flush cut bit in the router table. This does quick work of trimming the veneer flush with the core. Now I need to clean up the angled portion that overhangs the chamfer. I'll cut this off using a coping saw. A veneer saw would be ideal but a coping saw makes a suitable alternative. I cut the piece close and then clean up the joint using sandpaper. I sand in the direction of the bond so as to not dislodge the veneer from the core. I also use the flush cut bit to trim the veneer on the chamfered side even with the side of the foot. And note the direction that I went. I climb cut that because it's all end grain. When there's not a lot of excess to remove, 150 grit sandpaper works nicely for flushing up adjoining surfaces. I like how adjoining sides begin to look like real wood when they're blended together. For dried glue and other stubborn spots, I use a card scraper to flush up the surface. This works really nice and leaves a nice smooth finish. Final sanding with 220 grit sandpaper in the finish sander makes the veneer on the feet blend together and look great. Here I apply mineral spirits to highlight the grain. And you can see how alternating the grain direction gives the feet the appearance of real wood. Quarter saw and white oak looks great and I think these feet are really going to add to the substantial look of the leg system. Taking the time to address each column individually really pays off in the end. We get a tight foot for each column that really pulls off the look that we're going for. It makes the columns look like they're supported on top of the feet, but still gives us the opportunity to hide any shims that we need to level the pool table.